I'm here with Dr. Andre Dragomir with Aquark Technologies, and he is about to describe to us a very novel technique and technology for quantum computing and devices that can be made with miniaturized quantum computers. Could you uh, talk to us a little bit about that, Andre? Yeah, hello. Um, so. Uh, everybody heard of the quantum computer and how uh, it can change the world, can just can leave semiconductor technology behind. What most people don't know is that uh, together with the quantum computer, quantum technology brings along a huge array of different sensors uh, like time measurement, gravity measurement. Uh, you can even go as far as making a navigation system that doesn't need connection to a satellite, for example, and has huge precision. Uh, and we are here to miniaturize all the current technology that's currently in laboratory environments and bring it to everyday user. So uh, if you like the processor of quantum technology is the cold atom system and it generally looks like that. It uh, occupies a huge room and it requires several PhD students to run so experienced personnel is definitely not currently fit for field applications. However, so this is a, a quant what would you call this? A quantum computer? Or a quantum no, it's a simple quantum system. So it's like what lies at the heart of quant the quantum computer and different quantum technologies. So this is, this is the device that would allow you to establish atoms or whatever in a quantum state and exactly. measure measure their state their state that's exactly it that's exactly it and we have managed to m miniaturize all that into just this into which this is tiny, in that that tiny device this tiny is, little thing which is a miniaturized integrated vacuum chamber specifically designed for cooling down atoms so this obviously has no cryogenics associated with it tell me how you how you're keeping how are, are you keeping this cold or what do you do to cool it? So in order to cool atoms down, you generally need lasers, which is a bit counterintuitive because you think lasers, it heats things up, but actually if you use them properly, you manage to localize the atom in a single place, you're reducing their kinetic energy, and so it just cools down, uh, almost down to zero Kelvin, so absolute zero. Uh, so beyond having a miniaturized vacuum chamber, you also need, uh, we also develop novel laser geometries that will accomplish that, and our first design for a product would be an atomic clock, which is right here. So, can we show the camera then? So, the device that we're holding up, this quantum clock, measures about three by four by five inches on a side. It's a, a cube. Inside are a few modules and a couple of wires, but it's amazingly simple. Can you say a few more words about that? Uh, yes, so uh, generally now the second is measured to an SI unit in London and uh, the National Physics Laboratory have a huge room to measure that second. Well, most of the things that are in that room are fit in this box and we can measure time to a resolution to 10 to minus 11 seconds with this system. That, that is amazing. So you're not actually doing quantum computing with bits, but you're doing quantum measurement devices, is that fair to say? That's the first stage. So the same technology can be applied to everything from time measurement up to quantum computing and quantum memory. But this will be our first stage to actually get into the market. And then what stage would you call this? Uh, that's pre-first stage. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's everything. That's the magic that allows us to miniaturize technology to this level. Okay. So th this quantum clock that I described, this 4 by 5 by 3 uh, inch cube, is that available and working today, or what state is this in today? Right, so this today, it can be built upon request. Gotcha. So that's the state this we're at. Okay, and then this other device, this very small, like half inch on a side cube, yep. what, what kind of time frame are we talking for this kind of a device? So that is already available as soon as we have customers. So that's one of our... Um, one of our main points of being here, so we're first looking for partners, customers, and maybe, who knows, investors, and we can make this uh, more than just a lab-based device. So, so it, it would appear that you, you would be marketing not as much initially to consumers, but, but companies that build devices that could incorporate quantum technologies, quantum measurement. Exactly. So first of all, we are planning on getting a bit of traction with universities and research groups. That was going to be the first year or so of our development. And the uh, aim is to become the processor of quantum technology in, let's say, 10 years' time. So that every car, satellite, or train will be based on our devices. This is fascinating. I really applaud what you're doing. Um, so the company name again is? Aquark Technologies and you can find more about us at futureworlds.com uh, where we have a profile set up and uh, you can also find out about more about other uh, 
startups that are joining us today as well. So uh, futureworlds.com, that's the place to be. Fantastic, Andre. Thank you very much. It was a wonderful to hear about what you're doing. And I, I like to see this in the real world someday. Thank you. Hopefully we're going to get there. Thank you. All right. Thanks for the interview. Awesome. Thanks.